All right, so, so what we're going to start to do now is go through the viral life cycle, but this is going to take um, several lectures to kind of break it down. The idea is we're going to go through um, attachment, that's what we're going to do now, uh, and penetration is how the viral the viral particle or in the viral genome gets into the cell. And that's kind of going to be part of this whole first part. That'll lead directly into the synthesis part, but the synthesis part will take... Um, quite a while because we're going to look at then uh, different strategies of that, whether we go to lytic or, or lysogenic. Um, and then also there's this whole other part to the synthesis, which is based off of um, where do we begin with the viral genome? Uh, some viral genomes, like I said, was double-stranded DNA. Some will be single-stranded. Some will be RNA and so forth. For each of those, there's going to be uh, synthesis, which is going to involve um, genome synthesis and uh, viral gene expression. So two so different things. One is just doubling the genome. If it's double-stranded DNA, making more double-stranded DNA. That's it, just to package up into another capsid to move on to uh, the other viral particles and, and so forth. But then you have viral gene expression. They're going to be the capsid proteins themselves. They have to be made inside the host cell. So you have to express them. So you need to get RNA um, and then the cells ribosomes to use that. So this is all stuff you should have known before from our, our last material, but um, but now it's going to all come together. And the thing is, we're going to have uh, the mechanisms are going to be the same, but a different starting point uh, for all these. So there's a whole bunch of material related to that. Um, assembly is a process on its, on its own. Then you know, you have the genome, you have the different proteins, um, if it's enveloped or not, the capsid, all this stuff has to be all put together and make the viral particle. So we're going to go through a steps of assembly and then finally release. How do they get out of the cell? What's the mechanism? There are different types of mechanisms depending on the type of virus. So it's not something you just we're going to do all at once. But this is going to be broken down into several pieces. So right now, um, what we're going to do is get into the um, attachment and penetration part. This is the first two things. So attachment is specific for the host, host specific. Um, and that has to do with the specific proteins um, that are on the surface of the viral particle. So if you have a naked virus, like this, uh, it's going to have then on its surface you know, some little proteins that are then going to allow it to bind to certain cells and not others. So uh, a plant virus typically can't bind to an animal cell, and an animal one can't bind to a plant cell, for example. Bacteriophage don't affect human cells. Um, a human virus doesn't affect a, a bacteria. Usually they're even species specific, all right? So it's not just you know, mammals or birds, it might be a specific type of bird or a specific mammal or a specific species and so on. Even a specific cell type within that species, right? All dependent on proteins on the surface of the viral particle. Now, and that's going to be the same thing for uh, whether it's a naked virus or whether we have the uh, enveloped virus. The difference here is going to be the enveloped virus will then have this, and then the binding proteins will be in the envelope, like this. Uh, something to keep in mind is if the envelope is destroyed, typically those binding proteins would be gone, and even though there is a capsid with the genetic material, so whatever this happens to be, I just kind of do a little squiggle kind of representing the, the DNA. Um, this one doesn't need... Uh, the envelope to get into the cell. Uh, this one does. If you lose it, though, there's nothing embedded in that particular capsid uh, that would help it bind. So it would uh, be deactivated if it lost those binding proteins. So attachment is specifically through binding proteins for specific hosts. And they could be enveloped or they could be the naked virus. And either way, there's going to be some kind of proteins that do that. What will happen is they'll attach then to usually specific then receptors on the surface of the cell. So there are proteins in this particular cell that this virus identifies. Right? If this cell doesn't have those receptor proteins, then the viral particle does not bind to that particular cell. 
So that, there has to be that case. Now, once that happens, what will occur? Well, one option is um, those proteins will create a channel that can bring the viral particle through the membrane and bring the whole thing into the cell. That's one option. Another option is that the viral particle here uh, has, to, has its little binding proteins, um, but its DNA itself just gets pushed into the cell. No, no viral particle. Right? And yet then we have another option where the binding proteins could trigger a process, um, an endocytosis process, where the cell kind of engulfs the viral particle uh, and brings it inward. And then you'll have um, the viral particle in, you know, this bit of membrane. So it's kind of, it's, it's inside a little vesicle. It's almost like, in a way, it's a little bit like the um, enveloped one, but now that's slightly different, but get the basic idea that's surrounded by cell membrane. But then eventually what would happen is, in all these cases, the genetic material has to, at some point, get into the, the cell so that the next part can happen, the synthesis part. But this is the first part, getting into the cell. So attachment here. Um, now, the enveloped viruses. Same thing, we can also have a, a, an endocytosis process here that's triggered. Um, and then this whole thing you know, can be brought uh, into the cell. So you have that, and then the envelope, you know, and then the viral particle, like this. But typically, what's going to happen is that there'll be a fusion uh, between the envelope and the cell membrane here, like this, so that the viral particle can then enter the cell uh, without. without the actual um, structure uh, of the envelope coming through like that. So these are different ways, different processes that would allow a virus to enter a cell. The things to know about it, one, it's very specific for the host cell. The, the specificity is regulated or controlled by proteins on the surface of the viral particle. Okay, and that could be the, and that's the outer surface. So that the outer surface is just the capsid, the proteins that are part of the capsid. If it's enveloped, they're proteins, the spike proteins that are part of the envelope. Right? And that's not part of the capsid. Be, be something different or separate than that. Okay. And then we have the bacteriophage, which I've mentioned uh, um, before. So bacteriophage. Now this would be different. This is only for a bacterial cell. Uh, and in the case of that, um, it's always going to be just injecting directly the, the DNA or RNA, whatever it happens to be, but the genome uh, is directly injected into the cell. Right? Like that, again, that's separate. I'll put a little bit here. This is for the bacteria. Bacteriophage. All right, so that is going to be attachment and then penetration uh, into a cell. What happens next is going to be synthesis, and I'm going to start the synthesis part now. And then there's going to be you know, many sort of subparts to, to this, um, depending on what, what's going to happen. So once the viral genome has entered the cell, the overview to kind of talk about this, um, we're going to be looking at what's going to be happening if this is double-stranded DNA. That's kind of our our base starting point for the explanation of the process of the life cycle. Later we're going to have to go back through this process to, to find out what happens if the starting point is single-stranded DNA. What if the process starts off with RNA, not DNA? 
what's going to occur, and then there's a bunch of different variations and strategies to go into. Right. So the this first part is just the assumption that we're talking about a virus that's a double-stranded DNA virus. But that's not all the viruses. We're going to have to go through these others. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot more to it than what we're just kind of getting into now. It's just the, the beginning part of it. So the viral particle infects the cell. So here's the host cell. Viral particle infects the cell. Viral DNA, or in this case, the double strand DNA gets into the cell. So we need to enter into one type of process that we could enter into is called the lytic phase. And in the lytic phase, we get uh, an immediate synthesis occurring. Okay. So from this point on, what will occur are usually a few things. Now, one thing I didn't mention um, before is that inside the viral particle, we're kind of talking about the genetic material, the genome being in there, but also being pushed into the cell are certain viral proteins. So there are some enzymes that the virus has. Now these would be manufactured by the host cell, but then they're packaged up and, and kept in there. Uh, and so these would be proteins that would be used by the virus um, to do a couple different sorts of things. Uh, some might be to help lyse the cell wall or cell membrane. Um, and then others might be used to chew up or destroy some of the cellular DNA. So that's gonna be the, the, the case here. Um, so let's look at this particular cell. And we're going to say that um, this is it's. I'm going to do circular just because it's, it's easy, a little bit easier to do this as a, as a bacterial cell. Um, what's going to happen is, along with the genetic material of the virus that enters into the cell, will be some of these enzymes, and it's going to direct the destruction of typically the um, the host cell's genome. So the host cell genome. chopped up. So nucleases, proteins that will destroy the bonds between the nucleotides will start to break it apart. And then that material, so the nucleotides can be recycled to make the viral genome we're gonna have to make many copies of this viral genome and that in that material has to come from somewhere well it's going to come from the host cells genome by chopping it all up right so that'll be one of the first things that'll happen usually the host cell then loses loses that um, and so it's not going to be expressing typically any more of its genes and its genetic material is going to be uh, used in this particular way then what we'll have uh, is the beginning of the genome synthesis. So inside this cell, the first thing that then is going to happen is viral genome synthesis. So the proteins typically involved in DNA replication are going to just do what they do following the same sorts of rules that we've established already before, uh, reading template DNA, um, binding the nucleotides, the complementary DNA, making new strands of DNA and so on. That's what's going to happen. We're just going to make more copies and copies and copies of the viral genome. As that's happening, we're going to then get viral gene expression. So these are going to be you know, protein. Now this isn't coming out of the cell. I'm just drawing it here. Proteins. Uh, these are all going to be made. You know, these are inside the cell. They're all being manufactured here in the, the cytoplasm of the cell. But that's what's going to happen is the viral genome is then going to serve as a template for RNA. So we're going to have to go from essentially the 
viral DNA, essentially to make more copies. All right, so that's the first part. That's the viral genome synthesis. We also have to have transcription. And then ribosomes, you know, working uh, to do along this to do translation. to make those viral proteins. So what are those viral proteins? Okay, so some of them might be uh, enzymes needed for the next part of this process early on. Okay, so there's going to be sort of early, middle, and late gene expression. And I have uh, another specific example to go into a little bit later on, a different uh, lecture on this. But I'll just give you kind of the overview right now, since we're just kind of right here into this. So early on, like I said, some enzymes that are needed um, to aid in the process, they'll be manufactured early on. Um, some of the other early things that will be built um, will be scaffold proteins. Uh, these are structures that are needed to build the capsid. So if we're, we're going to have to rebuild the capsid. Um, and to do that, you're going to need all those capsimers. But to assemble them properly, typically they need something called a scaffold structure in order to assemble around them, or that they will assemble around. Uh, and those things have to come out first. You know, then we'll start to get the capsimers. The yeah, structures that will be used then to build the capsid, you know, and then we'll eventually get into the the assembly part, right? But that that's going to be kind of a little bit later, right? Um, so that's going to go toward the early part and into the middle part. Um, there'll be additional proteins that aid in the assembly. And those are going to be specific assembly proteins. Uh, for example, there will be uh, a little pump. Uh, a protein that's going to attach to an open capsid that'll pull in the genetic material. So essentially what you'll have is, you know, after you build the scaffold, we're going to go over this, like I said, later, and the capsum uh, mirrors, they'll start to assemble and you'll start to build this shell. Remember, it's, it's sort of this um, three-dimensional structure. Um, but what's going to happen is uh, it's going to be open. And there'll be a protein attached there that will then interact with the genome. So the genome has been replicated, right? And then what's going to have to happen is these proteins will actually pull the genome, and just one genome, not two copies or three copies, just into this particular uh, capsid like that. So it actually gets in there. Uh, and that's the process where you can potentially get some of the um, transduction occurring as well, like generalized transduction. So that's something, again, we'll, we'll come back to later. Finally, toward the end, the late proteins, which will be made, will be usually the proteins that will be involved in well, both finishing up this particular process and then the um, whatever's going to be their mechanism of leaving the cell. So leaving the cell can be a variety of different things. That's the release, that's our last part. Release is going to be either kind of reversing this process and, and getting the viral particle made and then coming back through and then exocytosis instead of endocytosis, the reverse, where a bit of membrane comes around the capsid to make the enveloped one, or it's gonna be lysis, so they're gonna be end proteins, late ones, will be enzymes that will lyse or destroy the cell membrane so the whole cell will burst. Um, and that's not always going to happen for all cells. Some cells that are infected by a virus are not burst. They don't burst. They're not destroyed by the viral infection. The virus continually uses that cell to make more and more and more copies of the virus. So the cell stays intact 
um, and its machinery is used in order to make more copies. Right? Um, so we'll get into other variations of the life cycle, but that's kind of the that's the overview, and that's a bit of the, the first two parts. So the attachment part really here, and penetration is what we've gone into. And now this is just the kind of the overview of synthesis. We have a lot more synthesis uh, to get into assembly and release, but um, this is sort of how we get the whole thing started.